I saw. I like to do what the Spirit of God likes to do. How many in the house are dealing with, whether it's sickness, uh, lack of sleep, restlessness, emotional issues that, that they don't want to tell nobody about, and that's okay? Today, the Lord said he would do a release for you. Sheka. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ha, ha, ha. See, there's certain things we have to contend for. If we don't contend for them, we leave them alone, and the enemy has a way. I was telling Ben, I said, Ben, and I want you to catch it before we pray. I said, we talk about anointing. And we thank God for the appointed anointing because the Bible says that Jesus said in Isaiah, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. Amen. Now, Jesus always functioned in all dimensions. But he was relating to the Old Testament from one perspective. Last week, we talked about visitation and habitation. Anointings are great because they come in and out in visitations. Glory is habitation. The glory is a place of habitation. The Bible says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Well, he's saying, if I'm abiding in you, because he's the word. So, so I want you to catch it. We started talking after, and I said to him, Benny, Benny, the glory is something you live in. It's not intoxicating, even though sometimes we talk about it as intoxicating or you got high. You know, sometimes I talk about I'm so high as a kite, right? And, and I understand that, that in the natural, I feel certain releases. But the bottom line is the glory functions to the degree that you stir it up. Because you're filled with glory. That's what you're made of. In the spirit, you are the glory of God. So in here right now, there's enough power in each and every one of us as the redeemed of the Lord, to cancel out whatever issues we're dealing with so that we can walk in the freedom that God already paid the price for. That's right. Amen. And I was, thinking, I was thinking of this. I said, you know what? If God wants us to live in glory, then glory does not accept the things that we've accepted. And what happened was I said to him, I said, listen, in a house... Even if you have an alarm system, if the enemy knows how to get in somehow, he'll get in. In my house, you know, we, we live where we live used to be farmland. I don't know how, but these little guys get up in the attic. And I don't mean how many times I've had the, uh, you know, organic exterminator come out and put all the peaches and cream and all that stuff up there. I don't know what, but they eat and they're still happy. <laughs> so last night I'm sitting there reading something in the bed, and all of a sudden I hear, I go, and we both stop and go. Now listen, I got the alarm system on, cameras all over the house, everywhere, cameras outside. If anything's moving outside, we're going to get a contact. But the only way we knew there was somebody up in the attic was because we would hear the, I said, oh my goodness. But all these things work together because I said, you see, you can pray certain things through. You can walk in glory. But if you are not mindful or be able to discern that sometimes there's critters that come up in your attic. And they're hanging out there. They're just hanging out there. And unless you exterminate them, they ain't leaving. It's time to exterminate this morning. <laughs> we we, we got to get rid of all the stuff. We, we got to get rid of all the stuff because what I'm going to teach today, we need to bushka mate ka. So I'm going to ask, come on, you, you get over there with Pastor Carmen. You get over there with Pastor Carmen. Amen. Okay. Uh, you, right here. You get this guy, young lady, the two of you. Okay. You release. 
You release. You're right there. You'll release. The two of you, you got to hit this rope. Come on. We ain't playing with this, man. Come on. Come on. Right here. Come on. Come on out. You, y'all move a little bit. You're going to take hands with this sister. Amen. Brother Frank, you're going to take hands with this brother. Sister, you with her. I want, you know, men with men, women with women. I, you know what I'm saying? Hey, glory to God. Come on. Come on, Sister Sheila. I, I know it's going to be a little disturbance right now for a little bit. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Come here, Frank. I mean, uh, uh, Nate, come here, come here, come here, Nate, come here, come here, Nate. Nate, Nate you with this brother, Sheh Kata. Uh, turn around, you, you with my sister right here. Hey, Basha, hey, my Koshka, my Hey, yeah, you, you got him. Come on, hey, she, the two of you, y'all nail this thing. Come on, Bill. Uh, 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 woo, come on, Frank, come on. Aubrey, look, he's sharp as a whip today. My God, come on, Princess. Come on, come on. <laughs> Come on, Dave. You got this. The two of you are going to take care of you. All right. There's Didi. Come on. There's Didi. You got Didi. Yeah, but we're going to get somebody for her, Didi. I know you, you, you love her. But... Come here. We're going we're gonna to roll with this. Come on, Silas. Get out of there. Come on, Silas. Is this this? And you to move mountains. Get up here. Come on. Shake up. Come on, come on. Right here. Carlos. Come on. One, two, three, four. You need more. You need some men right here. Come on. Give me a with you. Fuck out. No, you, I don't want you with mama. No, we disturbing everything. That's okay. Come on. No, you power high. Oh, I'm praying, but I want you to pray in faith. I want you to pray Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we release, we release, hallelujah, glory upon this house. Glory upon every issue that they have dealt with in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I come against every spirit of darkness, everything that the enemy will throw at them in the name of Jesus. Rompo todo impedimento en el nombre de Jesús. Shakarabakayaba. Padre, in the nombre de Jesús, llena, llena este vaso, llena este vaso ahora vivo. Llénalo, Padre, de tu gloria. Shabakarabakia. Oh, Shakanamasia. Shebababa koshe. Oh, glory. Father, we thank you for glory. Thank you for glory even now. Thank you for your glory upon each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we cancel out all sickness, all fear, all doubt, all anxiety, all depression, all oppression in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we release your people from any kind of bandage, any kind of bondage in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood. We plead the blood right now. In the name of Jesus. Shh. Arabasa. Rababa shakate. Sobaha. Hallelujah. Now, when you feel the release, when you feel the release, I want you to start giving God a good shout of praise. Come on, start giving God a good shout of praise. Come on. You've got the release. Come on. Hashe. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Take the shoes off. Okay. Glory, glory, glory. Santo eres tú, Jehová, Dios de los ejércitos. Tú eres el mismo allá hoy por todos los siglos. Tú no cambias, tú no mudas. Tú eres el único que puede. Te damos gracias, Padre. En el nombre de Jesús. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's give God a good shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. If you can get back in your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. There's a shift in the atmosphere. <laughs> There's a shift in the atmosphere. Come on. Oh, shifting the atmosphere. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, glory. Oh, my shit. <laughs> Woo. Something's moving. <laughs> Something's changing. Glory to God. Woo! I feel the spirit of the Lord in the house. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, I want you to say saturation. saturation. Manifestation. Manifestation. I am, I am. The, righteousness the righteousness of God in Christ. God in Christ. I, am I am blessed to be a blessing. Be a blessing. I, receive I receive everything, everything. God has for me. By faith, faith. in Jesus' name. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, I'm I'm so grateful for this opportunity to minister the word in what we would call our Christmas service, our Christ Mass service. (laughs) But, saints, I want you to catch this. No longer... Are we sitting around waiting for God to do something when everything is found in Christ? When everything is found in Christ. We are in Christ, listen, subduing all things to him. We are in Christ subduing all things to him. Amen? I've entitled this message, Everything is Found in Christ. Everything. Not one thing is missing in Christ. Everything is found in Christ. So if we can find everything in him, then we have the right to always go to him first and last. You know, there's a song many years ago. And you'll know who who it was when I give you the line. My first, my last, my everything. Sounds like Barry, doesn't it? (laughs) My first, my last, my everything. Let's let the Christ miss or the Christmas season and the upcoming year be one that everything is found in Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, everything. I want you to turn your Bibles over to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, I'll be reading from the Amplified Classic. And from Young's literal translation. Because you know something about Revelation. When God opens up your eyes to see something. You know, I, I've, been, I've been told that some of the things that I'm teaching are contrary to some people's believing. But I challenge them because my challenge is maybe you've been believing with misinformation. Because if you have misinformation, even a little bit of misinformation will take you off the target. And the Bible says we all know in part. But again, I understand that my calling and the mandate that God gave me 20, almost 28 years ago before I started ministry, he said, I'm calling you to lead people into the fullness of Christ. So God would not tell you to lead people into fullness if He's not capable of teaching you how to flow in fullness. See, because we need fullness in order to accomplish our mandate. It's no coincidence that this house has been founded on kingdom principles from the word and that we understand what it is to operate from the finished work. But the bottom line is, operating from the finished work is also progressive because the more we learn, the more there is to learn. But what we learn, we are supposed to manifest. Amen? Because faith is an action word, and faith always does one thing. Faith always acts out on that which they believe. And so, 
Here it says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, as we celebrate Christmas, that there's some things that the Spirit of God will teach you in the area of not only revelation, but we're in the time of reformation. Reformación. When there's a reformation, there's a layer of insight that was not revealed that now is revealed. The Bible says for we are to walk from glory to glory. And so I've been challenged with those things, but the bottom line is when I'm challenged with it, I don't argue. I just present my case. Because I'm not the one that enlightens. It's the Holy Spirit that enlightens. And if you're not enlightened, you can't see what you want to see. The Spirit of God got to show you. And the bottom line is, he can't take you where he hasn't taken me. That doesn't make me better. That makes me more humble to recognize that I've been entrusted with something that I have to live out. <laughs> and sometimes that road is very lonely. Why? Because you're, not everyone can see what you're seeing. And I thank God that God has placed some some saints around me that are, are, are understanding and catching, and they're contributing through prayer, contributing through, through the manifestation of, of walking in the prophetic to say, I hear that, and this is what I see. So today, we're going to take a layer off so we can see a little deeper. Is that all right? So it says here, it says, for unto us, a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uplift it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time for for the, for the latter time forth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it hallelujah i'm just going to lower this just a little here thank you see there's an undercurrent that takes place with this now i want to read from the young's literal translation and the reason why i i chose the young's literal translation is because in 1868 joseph young uh, had such revelation of the Spirit of God that, that he started to write a translation that was the closest so far to the Greek and Hebrew, to the original writings. So he writes from a place called there. <laughs> See, a lot of the English translators, when they, read, when they wrote the Bible, they were, they were writing to not from. See, when you write to, you're trying to get someplace. So you see everything from where you want to go. But when you write from, you can write from a place that there's a confidence that you know is for sure. Let me, let me show you how it, how it reads in, in, in Young's literal translation, Isaiah chapter 9. It says, for a child hath been born to us. Now, we know there's a time difference. He's in the 1800s, but now he has the revelation of hath. He's not going to. We know he hath. But how is it that he hath? What is it that he hath? It says, have been born to us. A son hath been given to us, and the princely power is on his shoulder. And he doeth call his name Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Father of eternity, Prince of Peace, to the increase of the princely power and of peace there is no end. On the throne of David and on his kingdom to establish it and to support it in judgment and righteousness henceforth, even into the, unto the age, the zeal of Jehovah of hosts doeth this. Now catch this. The revelation of Young's literal translation, literal meaning actual, 
free from exaggeration. Now, sometimes you'll find in the Amplified that it seems like it's exaggerated, but what it's doing is really trying to expand the simplicity of the word so that we can, we can you know, really catch what is being said. Because some English translations in King James, even the original King James with the doeth the thou then thou shalt, we, we can get lost in that. Amen? But look, at, look what it says. For, for the born again who are born from above, we have the Redeemer, the King who lives in us. For so long, we've read scriptures, unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And so immediately we see it from the outside. And, and, but there's a separation there. And as long as there's a separation, we start to function trying to go to God instead of from God. So God is going to heal me. No, he already has. It's depending on where you operate from. Because the moment you catch up from, you have or is already done. See, when you, you start to uncover these layers, what happens is there's certain things we've spend so much time praying for we do it for other folks that don't understand it but when you have the revelation of it you're not praying for your healing because you already got your healing you just start walking in what you already have by inheritance because it belongs to you come on come on Woo shit. listen listen he has the royal power notice where it is on that's the way the Lord gave it to me it's on his shoulders now, now, for a second, we got to go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Because I'll tell you, a lot of the stuff that we've been carrying around and dealing with, the enemy has been in our attic scratching. And we've been listening to the little mouse, little mice. They're about that little. They look kind of cute, too. I, I, know some, I know some cultures, they fry them and eat them. They put, dip them in chocolate, too. <laughs> they say it's protein. I ain't going to say no more about that. It'll grow somebody out. But are you in Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27? I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. Do you have the Amplified Classic translation back there? Woo. Yes, glory to God. He said, yeah, that's good. The mystery for which was hidden from ages and generations from angels and men. Los misterios que estaban escondidos. De ángeles y de hombres. Come on, I'm practicing, so when I go to Puerto Rico, I'm going to tear that place up in the Holy Ghost. No, I ain't playing with it. This is true. I know I am. And I thank God it's not, it's confidence in Christ, not the kid. Catch it, catch it. It says, it says, but it's now revealed to his holy people, the saints. Who are you? Come on, respond. Who are you? You're the saints. You're the holy people. You're the saints. Look what he says. To whom God was pleased to make known how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you, the hope of realizing the glory. You're not supposed to live from anointing to anointing. You're supposed to live in glory all day long, all night long, all day long, all the time. But think about it. When you live from the other place, you always, I, I siento el Espíritu. I feel the Spirit of God. And then you go outside to the hallway, I don't feel the presence of God. Things are really bad. Things are not good right now. I need you to pray for me. And then we pray for you. You feel a little bit. Then you walk down the street. Somebody cuts you off, and you don't feel the presence of God no more. Is anybody catching what the Lord is saying? Because, you see, God already ordained for you to walk in something that he made you out of. See, when you catch, the Bible says when you catch the thief, he's to return everything he has stolen from you. But, but. We've been trying to catch the thief with our confession, but we didn't know our position. Mm, that's, this is so delicious. 
we are his body, his temple, his dwelling place, his kingdom, his holy people. We are the sons and daughters of God. In other words, what he's saying to us in the title of the message is that everything is found in Christ. Holy, holy. And if it's found in him and he's in you, you already found what you needed. Come on. <laughs> I get so messed up with this stuff. It's so delicious. Because you see, when you get the revelation of it, you go, I've been tripping all my life for 40 years trying to get God to do something. God said, I've been waiting on you. Let's get a little deep on that. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. Let's, let's go there. Because you see, we want glory, but there's no manifestation without the word. And the word's supposed to reveal. And how does the revelation of the word become the rhema? The Holy Spirit has to reveal it. Man's knowledge just falls short. You see? So Young's, by the way, Joseph Young, he didn't go to any cinnamon Mary. You know where he went? To the throne of glory. And the Holy Ghost taught him. <laughs> Isn't that delicious? Mm, okay, okay. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 23 says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. In the Amplified it says, Your heart flooded with light. Your heart flooded with light. Now, 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 let's catch this. Because many times when we think about understanding, we go right away to our own mind way. Our own mind. But our mind really can't be released that way unless it's renewed with the word. But we have the mind of Christ. We hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. Which is dealing with our heart. I know more in here than I know here. But I have to let this go into here. Most of the time we've been trained, even in, 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 in seminary, to learn from here to there. And you miss it because head knowledge does not take you where God wants to take you. I'm going to make it plain. I have this. This is my theory. I haven't proved it yet, but I'm, if the Lord releases it, he'll find a way to, to make it. You see, how many of us really function with the full capacity of our brain? We function with a very little. And people that function with a little more become geniuses. Could it not be, this is my opinion, I'm not telling you God said it, this is my opinion, could it not be that the Spirit of God renews your mind in that area that's not being used so that your mind can... Professor, que tu crees? Eso está bueno, bye. Santo. Woo, that's delicious, boy. My goodness. We got to catch, you see, God will do stuff to rock your world so that you lean off of your own understanding. Isn't that good, Sheila? Sheila, listen, listen, Sheila. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So your inheritance is the riches of his glory. Everything you want, need, or desire is already in you. We've been looking outside for it, but God said, no, it's not outside. It's inside of you already. And the thing is, the moment we start thinking the way God thinks and confirming it with his word, he starts giving us direction. Look at how the Lord dealt with her. Every I, know, I know she was starting, a, a, it was months ago that she, she's trying to get these people to get these things done and, and sending back and forth. And I could tell sometimes, and, and this is not being ugly about it, she, she was frustrated sometimes. She goes, I can't believe these people. And we would go, let's just rest in the Lord. God has got this. God has this. And look. God doesn't put her with a second best, puts her right with the warden. Because when God's connected you, he will close doors and keep doors closed that are going to there to trip you up. And he'll open doors that no man can open and he'll keep them wide open for you so that you can carry out your mandate. That's so good. Listen, listen, listen. 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. When you start working from his mighty power, you don't take the weight of it anymore. Why? Because everything is found in Christ. And you don't have to go to the psychologist and the psychiatrist and, and, and everybody else to give you information. Because most of the information they give you is a little bit here and a little bit there that they don't really know. But God has the solution. You can't sleep. God's got the solution. You're dealing with stress. God's got the solution. You're dealing with sickness. God's got the solution. You're dealing with lack of finance. God's got the solution. He had it before you were born. Because think about it. He finished it before he came to earth. Didn't he say before the foundations of the world? He was crucified before. So all the things that happen in the natural are just things that already took place in the eternal. Should I tell him? You want me to? Yeah. So, listen, that whole part of the, that part of the building that fell over there, that everything went down, don't take it. That had to happen because that was a sign for us of this. And I know some people will go, oh, what's wrong with you? When we were stuck in religion, we could just go but so far. <laughs> the soon as the walls came tumbling down, a whole new layer, a whole new level of revelation. Now, wait, 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 wait. You want a little further? Y'all go deeper? A little deep with me? <laughs> Listen, what's going to happen this week before the New Year's? All the sewage is gone. <laughs> Everything that had us constipated in the spirit. <laughs> I know that people don't like it because your mind gets in the way but he gonna clean up the house so you can flow so that you can flow so that you can flow no more stinking thinking no more backing up no more junk come on up uh. <laughs> I don't know where that there's not a confirmation of that in the Bible Every time God was doing something in Reformation, there was things that had to be broken. There were people that were taken captive, people that were released. Then he said, they will be scattered all over the world. But at the appointed time, I will bring them all back in. Whew. So don't be tripping about your kids out there in the world tripping. And Whatever they're doing... Whatever's going on that belongs to you, when God pulls it, bam, they got to come. They got to come. They got to come, and they're going to come. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. So can I tell you something? Right there, you missed a good spot. Because if you really believe it, you see your daughter totally filled with the Holy Ghost and power. You see your sons. You see everything that's been out of order coming into divine order because you can't do it. You've not been able to change it, but God is able. Shot. Woo. Shh. Woo. <laughs> Shh. Woo. Oh, glory. <laughs> oh. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sit him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet. Mm. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Now, wait a minute. You got to connect something. Defeat. I'm going to make it real plain. I, I was going to go a little further and then reveal it, but I got to do it now. God always ser saves the best for last. Defeat. <laughs> the feet can move. The feet can run. The feet can step over stuff. The feet can go over. Yes, 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 yes. 
You want to make it even more play? He saved the best wine for last at the end. See, you're the new wine. You're the wine that don't get drunk with intoxication chemicals. Y'all get drunk in the Holy Ghost. Y'all get messed up in the power of God. Mm. See, I don't need Chevrolet's Regal to get me here. <laughs> Bacardi and Coke ain't going to do it. <laughs> I don't need El Benito. I am El Benito. <laughs> Come on, David. <laughs> I know it gets crazy, but I'll tell you right now, one day you're going to see, the turn on the TV, and I'll be preaching in that big, that big dome in Sydney. And you're going to go, that's my pastor. Oh, my God. Look at him. He said it all. And look at God. And you know I'm going to call out Sister Eddie from wherever. <laughs> I say, pray, girl, pray. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Look at what it says. He says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and everything that is named not only in this world but also in the world to come and have put all things under his feet. You see, if he's put it under his feet and he is the head. We are the church. We are his body then he's putting everything under our feet to step on and overtake. I'm going to make it plain. When was the last time you saw a head over here and the body moving? If it's disconnected from the head, it ain't going nowhere. And I don't care how big the head is, how much power the head is, but if the head ain't connected to the body, the body ain't going nowhere and the head can't go nowhere. You see how God speaks? You have the mind of Christ. Where's the mind? In the head. <laughs> Where's the head connected to the body? <laughs> we got to connect the dots. When you start connecting, you're going, no wonder I had that thought that didn't make no sense. But by faith, I can see it. See, the natural mind. Oh, my God. You got to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in its totality. Because I tell you, once you read it, especially verse 47 to 49, it makes it real plain. It says that the natural man has the carnal mind, the mind of the flesh. But the spirit man, born again, has the mind of the spirit. I can see the phone calls already. Pastor, I got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And have put all things under his feet and have given him to be the head over all things to be the church, which is his body. Hear it. Verse 23. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. That filleth all in all. You are the fullness. You can't go any further than fullness. Replace whatever you've been taking as your medicine or as a habit of satisfaction with the fullness of Christ. And you'll see how supernaturally you get rid of whatever you're dealing with in your life. Every answer. Everything is found in Christ. I'll give you one more verse down there. It's, it's verses, uh, second chapter. Chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 6 and 7. It says... And hath raised us up together with him and made us sit to sit down together, living, giving us joint seating with him. Think about it, Jennifer. I have joint seating with Christ. Oh, so do you. So does every believer. So does every child of God. That's why when we approach the the throne, the Bible says, we approach the throne as the righteousness of God in Christ without shame or guilt. Because a son or a daughter, when they go home, they're not begging. Amen? When Kevin comes to visit you, 
He, he, you kidding me? He pulls up right to the driveway, come in the house, goes right into the refrigerator, get what he, he, that's house, that's home. If he came in, he just go get some keys. Hey, mom, I'm going to the store. See you in a little while. Boom, boom, and he goes. Am I talking right? That's what God is saying. If you are sons and daughters, act like you are. You have a freedom in Christ that the world does not have. Yet they're the prodigals that you're supposed to redeem and bring forth or reconcile them to Christ. Because they don't know who they are. That's the problem with the world. They don't know who they are. I'm a man in a woman's body. I'm a dog and a cat. What else is going on? But once they know who they are in Christ, it changes everything. Hallelujah. Is that, is that blessing anybody? And look what he says. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, and surpassing riches of his free grace, unmerited favor, in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ. Jesus. So you want the greatest Christmas present the greatest Christmas present is not the gift under your tree or the credit card or the trip to New York or to wherever you're going on vacation. The greatest Christmas present you can have is that Christ is living inside of you. Ha, hallelujah. Receive this. The eyes of our understanding is being enlightened with the reality that everything is found in Christ and that it's already in us. How blessed are we to have Christ in us and to have joint seating with him according to Ephesians chapter 2. Go to 1 Corinthians 15 verses 25 to 27. I hope you're getting blessed with this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you see, when you get right teaching from the Spirit of God, you can live the different life. And I've been saying for over a year, you and I, as the redeemed of the Lord, are living in a whole new world, a whole new way of living. It's beautiful. And it says, for Christ must be king and reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 25. For Christ must be king and reign until he has put all things under his feet. Now, I put next to that verse, we have a part. We have a part. We're the subduers. We're the subduers. The enemy under his feet. He's the head. We're the body. The greatest part is going forward. Not being idle. Not falling asleep or being complacent. The last enemy to be subdued and abolished is death. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody looks, for the most part, most people look at death from two different places. Number one, oh, they just died. Or God needed another angel. What foolishness. God doesn't need any angel. You could never be, if you became an angel, you're lower than what you God created you to be. God needed another angel, a beautiful angel. That's because they don't know the word. And I understand that I, they don't mean it in a bad way. I understand that, you know, the lack of understanding causes people to say things that they think is higher and better. But you and I know better than that because we have the knowledge of the word of God. Death can't do 